Hello and welcome to an Affinity Revolution tutorial. My name is Ezra Anderson, and today we're going to learn how layers work in the iPad version of Affinity Photo. Layers are a crucial skill for working inside this program, so if you're new to Affinity Photo, this tutorial is for you. If you'd like to follow along with the same images that I'll be using, I've included a download link in the video description. To see how layers work inside Affinity Photo, the first thing we're going to do is open the Layer Studio. The Layer Studio is where we can find all of the layers for the document that we're working on. Right now, we just have one layer, which is the photo that we're working on. With this layer and all other layers, we can turn it off and on by pressing on the check mark next to the layer. You'll notice that when we turn off this layer, our background is made of a checkerboard. This is Affinity Photo's way of telling us that there is nothing there. A checkerboard means there's no information or it's completely transparent. We'll see how this is important later on in the video. For now, I'm going to check back on our background layer. To make things more interesting, let's add a second layer to our document. To do this, I'll press on the plus button and then select New Pixel Layer. If we check our new pixel layer off and on, nothing happens. That's because there's currently nothing on this layer. To visualize better how layers work, we're going to paint something onto this layer. To do this, I'll just select the paintbrush and then paint something onto this layer. Now if we check our pixel layer off, the smiley face that we drew will disappear. But if we check the layer back on, then everything we've painted on that layer will be visible. To make this even more clear, let's add another pixel layer. I'll press on the plus button once again and select New Pixel Layer. Now I'll change the color to a bright red. And then I'll make a simple painting. Now we have a red triangle on our new pixel layer. With three layers inside of our document, we can begin to see how powerful and important layers are. By having our background photo, the smiley face, and the triangle all on separate layers, we can turn them off and on independently of each other. Perhaps even more importantly though, we can click and drag on any of these layers and rearrange them inside the Layer Studio. Let me show you what happens if I click and drag on the background image and put that layer on top of our two pixel layers. With our background image at the top of the Layer Studio, it's now covering up our other two pixel layers. And as you can see, it's covering up these pixel layers even though they are checked on. The important principle to take away from this is any layer at the top of the Layer Studio will affect the layers underneath it. I'm going to click and drag on this triangle layer and place it above the photo layer. We can now see that the red triangle is covering part of the background photo. This is because it's on a higher layer than the background image. However, because the background image is still on top of the smiley face layer, that smiley face layer is still not visible. Let's click and drag on the smiley face layer to place it above the background photo. So far we've only made new pixel layers, but there's many other types of layers that we can add into our document. Let's use the commands menu to place a new image inside of this document. I'll come up to the top left and press on the commands menu and then select place, place from photos. I'll then go into my favorites folder and select this bird. To place this photo, all we need to do is click and drag anywhere inside the document. We now have two images inside of this document. One of our images is a picture of a bird, and the other is the original beach picture that we started off the video with. Our photo of the bird, though, is special 
because it has a transparent background. There are two ways to tell that it has a transparent background. The first is that the bird photo is only partially covering the layers beneath it. If it didn't have a transparent background, then the bottom three layers would not be visible. We can also see that it has a transparent background by unchecking the other three layers. Now we can clearly see that this bird photo has the checkered transparent background. I'll check back on the other three layers. In Affinity Photo, you can give any picture a transparent background by making a selection of the background and then deleting it. To save your photo with a transparent background, you just need to remember to export it as a PNG file and not as a JPEG. If you export it as a JPEG file, then the background will become white and not transparent. For the picture of the bird, that's the exact process that I did. I made a selection of the background, deleted it, and then exported this picture of a bird as a PNG. We'll learn how to make selections in other videos. For now though, there's a couple more things I want to show you that you can do with layers. If you ever want to group your layers so they're more organized inside the Layer Studio, it's very easy to do. Just click and drag to the left on all of the layers that you want to put inside of a group, and then press on the folder icon in the middle of the Layer Studio. Now all three of these layers have been put inside of a group. While they're inside a group, they'll act as if they were one layer. That means we can turn them all off and on by pressing on the check mark next to the group layer. If we want to work with any of these layers individually, we just need to press on the triangle to the left of the layer. Then we can turn any of the individual layers off and on. If you decide that you no longer want to have a group, you can ungroup these layers by pressing on the commands menu and then selecting ungroup. Next, we're going to learn about layer opacity. Right now, all of these layers have 100% opacity, which means they are totally visible. But if we lower the opacity of any of these layers, they'll become partially invisible. To see how this works, I'm going to click on the bird layer so I have just that layer selected. Then I'm going to press on the three circles at the top left of the layer studio. As you can see, the opacity is set to 100%. But as we click and drag, we can lower that number to make the bird partially see-through. With a lower opacity, we can partially see the bird, but we can also see some of the background behind it. Layer opacity is very important when you're trying to blend two layers together. For now, I'm going to bring the opacity back up to 100%. To come back into the main part of the Layer Studio, we'll press on Layer Options at the top left. We're now going to learn about another very important type of layer, and that is an adjustment layer. An adjustment layer will affect the color of all the layers beneath it. To see how this works, we're going to come to the Adjustment Studio. Then we're going to scroll down until we see the Recolor Adjustment. Now I'll press on Recolor. As you can see, it's made our entire photo bright red. If we come back to the Layer Studio, we can see that the Recolor Adjustment is now on top of all of our other layers. But let's see what happens if we click and drag on the Recolor Adjustment and place it lower in the layer stack. Now the Recolor Adjustment is only affecting the background picture because that's the only layer it's on top of. That might be a little hard to see right now because it looks like it's also affecting our triangle, but the triangle was red to begin with. To see that this is true, we can click and drag to the right on the hue slider in the contextual toolbar to change our recolor adjustment. Now we can see more clearly that the recolor adjustment is only affecting the background picture beneath it. What do you think might happen if we put the recolor adjustment 
at the bottom of the layer studio. Let's click and drag on the recolor adjustment to find out. Now with the recolor adjustment at the bottom of the layer studio, it is not affecting any part of our picture. That's because it is not above any of the other layers. By this point, you probably have a good understanding that layers on top will affect the layers beneath them. A problem you might run into though is what if you only want to affect one of the layers and not the other layers? For example, what if we wanted to recolor the bird but not any of the other layers in our document? If we click and drag to place the recolor adjustment on top of the layer studio, it's now recoloring the bird, but it's also recoloring everything else. To solve this, we can make the recolor adjustment a child layer of the bird layer. A child layer means it will only affect its parent layer. So if we make the bird a parent to the recolor adjustment, only the bird will be recolored. To make the recolor adjustment a child layer, we're going to click and drag it on top of the bird layer. Make sure that you get a blue square like this before you release. Now the recolor adjustment is a child layer to the bird, so it is only affecting the bird layer. Similar to when we made a group, we now have a triangle to the left of the bird layer, which we can press on so we can see our recolor adjustment underneath the bird layer. If we ever want, we can always uncheck this child layer and leave the original layer on. Or, if we want to permanently delete a layer, all we need to do is have the layer selected and then press on the trash can icon at the top right of the layer studio. As you progress with your skills in Affinity Photo, you'll find child layers to be crucial to your editing. Being able to apply adjustment layers to just one individual layer gives you incredible flexibility. Before we finish this video, I want to highlight one very common problem that new users to Affinity Photo have. That problem is having the wrong layer selected. For example, let's say that we wanted to erase part of the background beach photo. In that case, we might get the eraser tool out and begin painting over the background to erase it. Unfortunately, as I tried to erase the background beach, I was erasing the bird. That's because I had the bird layer selected inside the layer studio. I'm going to press on the undo arrow at the bottom right to undo that last action. Now I'm going to select the beach layer and use the eraser tool to paint on this layer. You can see that I'm now erasing the beach photo without affecting the layers on top of it. If I could give one tip to new Affinity Photo users, it would be to make sure you have the right layer selected. If any of the tools in Affinity Photo aren't working the way they're supposed to, chances are you might have the wrong layer selected. By keeping this tip in mind and all of the other things that we've learned in this video, you're well on your way to becoming an Affinity Photo Master.